Hey everybody, uh, welcome to another edition of Hey Man, I am Josh Wolf. I'm Jacob Wolf. this is a nice special edition, we are in Charlotte, um, in a real podcast space. You know what, I should have thought of this a long time ago. While we're on the road to just, just rent, to a, rent podcast a podcast for an hour is a really smart just idea. Just seems like instead of sitting in our hotel room and getting hotel Wi-Fi and hotel everything else, this is... Professional. Yeah, I like this man. Yeah, it's a good setup. Yeah, uh, shout out, uh, shout out to our man uh, Chris for uh, yeah. helping us out today. It was uh, we really appreciate it. It is great. And, and um, so, listen, you better step. We got to step up our game because we look professional here today. But let me just say this: True. first of all, um, it, it, it we're in Charlotte. Um, some amazing shows here mm-hmm. this weekend. Uh, I'm just coming off of a. This is like the. A 10 day I've been away from home like 10 days yeah this is the string on the road that I had to I had to take off because you were just in Nashville for three different shows but you were there for six five six days right well I did first let me just recap real quick I was in Chattanooga at the Walker Theater right and let me just first of all say to you all who came out and packed that place out yo I legitimately dude when I walked on stage, the energy in the applause almost brought me to tears. That's awesome. It was like, it, uh, it's so overwhelming. And so that show was amazing. And you guys know that after my shows, I don't, I don't charge for meet and greets and I don't sure. charge for pictures. And um, we just had a theater full of people in line at the meet and greet. And it was it's great, amazing meeting all of you. And then... I will say this trip to Nashville, dude, and and all of my shows in Nashville are always good, but this trip was extra. So the Bonanza extravaganza that we did, right, might have, and our boy Nate Rose did his comedy for the first time. I saw that, dude. But that whole show, and we've had shows with bigger stars on it, right. like bigger guests, mm. the Jelly Roll, you know, Philip and Jimmy from mm. Little Big Town. We've had some pretty big names come up there. But man, this show was like, it was the best one we've ever done. It was awesome. And that energy was bananas. And then to perform at the Ryman uh, a couple days later and to actually sing some of my songs at the Ryman was like bucket list. Now, I had been on stage and done comedy at the Ryman before in front of Jelly Roll. But um, to sing some of the songs and hear the people singing the words back was Mm. like next level. And then, dude, honestly, maybe the best night was a night I wasn't expecting to go on stage. I I wanted to see Big J, Okerson, and Bobby Kelly do their crowd work show. Right. Because I think they're both so fucking funny. Right. And so quick. Big J is like, he'll go anywhere with his jokes. He's great at bringing people back in. He's not one of these crowd work dudes who goes back to his, you know, a lot of crowd work people, and this is no knock, but they're not really crowd work people. They do the same crowd work at every show. They just figure out how to, it's part of, it's their act. Right. It's their act. Right. Um, And there's no knock on that. That's, there's a crazy art to that. Um, But it's Big J and Steve Byrne. Those guys, well, Steve is a menace. Adam Ray, they do crowd work, real crowd work, mm-hmm. just forever who's in front of them. Yeah. And so it was so funny to watch. And I had taken you know, probably one and a half, two grams of mushrooms because I was going to go watch. And then Brian Dorfman, who is just, dude, my f- favorite, he owns Zanies. And he was like, hey, dude, you should hop on stage tonight. And I was like, this is a bad idea. This is a bad idea. Yeah. I'm, I'm, yeah. I, I'm having a great time, but my focus isn't going to be good. And, and yeah, he, last time I remember you doing mushrooms on stage was Austin, which was the beginning of this month. Um, and you were like, oh, eventually I got to get off stage and you were trying to get through stuff, but you ended up being up there for two hours. Because you couldn't, you just couldn't keep track of yourself or yeah. keep track of time. Like at a certain point, you brought me and Trevor up, yeah. my brother, and we were up there telling our story. And halfway through the story, you went on to tell us, like, it was your turn to talk. Yeah. 
And then after your turn, you were like, all right, it's time to get you guys off the stage. And we were like, what the f- We're in the middle of a story. We are in the middle of a story, high ass. Like, I, what, what What do you do? I watched that set. You know, I watch all of our sets. Yeah. And I watched that set, dude. And um, I just got to... I, I think I like me on stage on mushrooms more than on weed. Because on weed, I'm, I'm slowing the pace down. And on weed, honestly, I'm in my head some. On mushrooms, I'm just I'm just rolling, and and I, so I might do it once a weekend. I think here's what I'm thinking. I think Friday night late show might just be the mushroom show. Okay, it might be fun yo, to label it as that. Yo, dude, this show with Big J and and Bobby. First of all, I felt really bad. A a a legend, Killer Bees. A, a legend. I don't know who that is. I know. In comedy, especially Southern comedy, Southeastern part of the States, this dude has been selling tickets for years. So Dorf was like, hey, why don't you and Killer Bees go on together? And I was thinking to myself, this is a bad idea. Because when I'm on Mushrooms, I'm not letting anybody else talk. You're going to you're gonna out-talk the Killer Bees. You fucking... You're going to out-talk anybody. I'm going to out-talk myself. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. That is true. Sometimes you have too many words. Oh, dude. That come out before your thought process. Yeah. 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 So it was a crowd work show. Man, this me and this dude who is a legend in comedy get on stage together. And I don't know how long we were on stage together when I finally turned around and I thought, oh, he's up here too. Oof. He had already put the microphone back in the stand and was standing like two feet away from it. Just like. Mm. Yeah, dude, I felt so I kept trying to inc- conclude him afterwards, but he, it was over and it was totally my fault. I apologize. No, this is how bad it was. Not only did I apologize to him after the show, I apologized to his wife. Oof. Not That's the mushrooms talking, though. Yeah, but dude, that's for sure. The mushrooms talking. Can I tell you, I apologized in such a I love you, man, kind of way. It was looking back on it. It's he, embarrassing. He probably doesn't ever want to see you. Anymore. No, he doesn't. Because you know what he said to me after I apologized to him? Good talk, man. <laughs> That's like giving somebody a thumbs up. Yeah, dude. It was. A, I don't blame him. He's a, like I said, a fucking legend. And I just went, I shroomed out on him. And I think not only was I super shroomy, but he was super stoned. So the energy was just like mismatched. Yeah, 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 yeah. I felt I felt really, really bad. If you were both stoned, it would have been probably a little different. But you being on mushrooms and him just being regular high, it's two different. It's just levels. There's levels to it. Yeah, and there those are for sure two different levels. So I can see why that would be. What do you think about a Friday late mushroomy stony baloney show? Not the whole show because that'll be out of control. I'm stoned at every show. Yeah, I don't love that. I'm gonna be honest with you. Hey, you said once it hits eight p.m. Eight p.m. You're allowed to smoke, but I I would love to see you at least do the first show. Well, actually, I did last night. Yeah, you should. Here's the thing, and I and I'm one to talk because, and I think this is something that a lot of young comics do. I, I did you know I used to smoke cigarettes before the show? Gross. Yeah, but it was to settle myself down. I would smoke one or two cigarettes. Me and Joey Diaz. Gross. Right? Um, and then I would maybe do a shot or two before to kind of... Mm-hmm. But I think you don't want to get into the habit of having to... No, I I, I don't have to. I, but, and also, you, you're saying I don't want to, you don't want me to get into the habit. Yeah. I will say, when I drink before I go on stage, I get nervous. Like, the, the drinking, like the alcohol in my system actually makes me nervous when I go on stage. So well, I, that's, that's why I don't, I don't drink anymore when, I like we're, in that. The, when we're in the green room. Like if I'm in between shows and if like I have a time to like just drink a beer like after the meet and greet and whatnot, I will. But before I go on stage, if I drink alcohol, like I get like nervous and jittery when I'm on stage. Well, what about what about what, what, how would you feel about not smoking at all before the first show? That's fine. I did that last night and it was my favorite set. Yeah. Like that that first show last night was my favorite set that I've done so far. I agree. I, and I'm going to tell you something. I, I, the, you know, I took such a long break from weed. Mm hmm. I've, I, and I was like, oh, that does not, I realize that once in a while it's fun, but it doesn't make me better. I know that now. I thought it did. I was like, oh, it opens up my brain. It makes me, oh, it that, doesn't make me better. That's not at all. What it is. I don't think it contributes anything to anything I do on stage. I just do it because it's habitual at this point. Yeah. 
So, but but for me, like, yeah, definitely, I, I enjoyed how well I I think I did last night in front of not that many people uh, sober than I did when I was high the first night. Yeah, I think I would do, and thanks for mentioning there weren't that many people. Uh, You're welcome. Got to keep you humble. You fucking asshole. Got uh, a lot of people there tonight for both shows, though. Um, I think I do um, uh, I think I do so much better not high it was definitely noticeable for me for sure yeah dude I mean if uh, and I would not smoke first before first show or second show and I guess if you want to do it before we do Q&A that's usually when I do it Oh, okay. Yeah, I wouldn't do it before you get on stage. No, I, I usually do it before the Q&A. Yeah. Because the Q&A is a little more loosey. Yeah, way more loosey-goosey. That's why I'm, I, I, f- I don't feel nervous when I, like, if I go up there or if I have, like, a drink before or if I smoke before. Like, the Q&A is something that we've been doing for yeah. a while now, so I'm a little more uh, calm with it. But the opening and the hosting has been so new to me that any anything in my system... Uh, makes me a little bit jittery, a little bit nervous before I go up on stage. So, well, then let's not do that. You also have been your your, your stories are getting way better. Um, that you the song you wrote, the song is doing well, really I like well. That. Yeah. Um, the opening is definitely something new. Like, I I I have never hosted, opened, featured none of that until Austin, Texas. We were sitting in the green room. And actually, funny enough, I was outside smoking weed with the door open, and I hear them come in, and they go, hey, so, are you ready? And my dad goes, yeah, it's just going to be me and one other guy, right? And they go, well, in your contract, it says your son's hosting. Mm-hmm. And I just peeked my head in the door, and I was like, huh? Mm-hmm. Like, well, that wasn't in my contract. Like, I, You don't that, have a contract. Exactly. Like, that's very new to me. Yeah. Um, and they're like, do you want to do it? And I was like, sure. And so I just kind of, we just kind of made it happen and made it happen on the fly. And now we're going to turn this into a, into a, a I think two man show. I, I yeah. will, you I know, mean, what, we'll have people come with us. Yeah. I love every, Stephen every, Randolph and Sandy Danto and Kenny Garcia. Yeah. And so we'll work them in, um, just because I like hanging out with my friends, Agreed. you know, uh, but I want you to get more comfortable and, you know, right now you're telling stories about me. Yep. Um, but eventually you're going to be telling stories about you. Right. So, and, and listen, dude, this is a big month for you, man. You're moving out of the only city you've ever lived in, in your entire life. Don't remind me. Tell me what that is like. Are you excited? Are you nervous? Are you? It's bittersweet. It's bittersweet for sure. It's sweet because I'm very excited to, you know, close one chapter and open another. Um, I just need to get the fuck out of LA because it's just like toxic energy. Granted, all my friends are there. But the energy is toxic. Driving, just driving on a daily basis makes me angry. For sure. It like ruins my day. For sure. Kind of shit. Um, it's way too expensive. Everybody thinks they're better than you. Um, do you remember Angry Josh driving down the streets in LA? Yeah. Do you remember that one time some dude cut you off taking a left-hand turn and he flipped you off and you chased him down Ventura for four miles? Yeah. Yeah. With me in the car. I do remember. And that. then eventually I was like, yo, like he stopped. And you almost, like he got out and got into a parking lot and was like going grocery shopping with his, with his wife. Yeah. And you pulled into the parking lot and almost got out. And at that point, again, for the 40th time, I was like, is it really worth it? Yeah. 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 And then you just drove off. Yeah. Yeah. No, my, mine's pretty bad. Yeah. I will tell you, I, I want to, I, I do need to apologize for you to you because I know you get that road rage stuff from me. And it was, it was, be, it was because. I mean, I can't blame L.A., but I had a lot of underlying anger in L.A. Do you know why I had that? Uh Uh-uh. You know, and I'm so glad. And some of it's age, and some of it, honestly, is from moving out of Los Angeles. But (laughs) the fucking loudest Drinker, guys. I just want you to know one of my thirsty. Sorry. One of my, God. one of my pet, and not even pet peeves. Just something that I'm born with, is any kind of eating or drinking noise or this noise, that counts as eating and drinking noise. Any kind of eating or drinking noise, for me, is like 
300 times louder than it actually is. It grates on me in a way like going out to dinner you dick. <laughs> going out to dinner or is okay because it's louder but when you're just at dinner with people that you know and it's like at a house or something and all you can do is hear people eating and drinking it I, makes me want to fucking pull my you, ears you off you know the one thing that he hates the most is slurping so if we ever oh, eat spaghetti or pasta God. or soup I'll look him dead in the face it's pretty funny. And I got to tell you something else. I'm not sure which noise bothers me more. If I can hear you chewing with your mouth open, it bothers me. But if I can hear you chewing with your mouth closed, good fucking God. Well, I mean, at least they're being polite with their mouth Dude, closed. No, like, no, this isn't. But by the way, I'm just telling you, this isn't an, another person's problem. This is a me. I think some of us are just born with that thing that that particular noise is magnified. Yeah. I will say also though, I am a loud drinker. Like I, I, I drink my beverages loud. Yeah, loudly, I guess. I also am just used to having cotton mouth. So I'm just used to having to get as much, as much of a drink yeah. in my face as possible. So, you know, you did wake me up and I was like, Oh, it's time to go. And so I haven't had anything to drink this morning. So That's that, true. That water is the first That's thing. True. That's true. In my system. I, I, and we're going to get back to your move. Yep. And I just want to say the reason that all that, I had an underlying anger is um he wasn't smoking enough weed no i was smoking so much weed at the time is la made me turned me a part of me into somebody i'm not la turned me especially as i was leaving i was this dude who was comp i'm not a comparison guy and i'm truly happy for my friend's success and I truly believe that just because some one person's successful doesn't mean I can't be. Right. And I truly believe and know that not everybody's gonna like you. And, yep. and you not, can't please everyone. It's yeah, and, and look, there are some people I'm sure in my life who are like, Why doesn't that dude uh wanna hang out with me? Or why doesn't and like and so I was like, Yeah, the I can't I just have to live my life and other people get to live their lives and they get to have their own thoughts about me or react to me right. or treat me or, or live. They get to live their lives however the fuck they want to. Right. I don't have any control over that. Right. All I can do is just, and so, but I had lost that perspective in LA and it become a, what about why, why her, why him? How come I'm not on this podcast? Mm -hmm. How come I don't get to be on this show? And it had, because I, my, I had always thought that I need to be happy all the time and outwardly I was, I was not being myself. And when I wasn't being myself, when I was being like, I'm happy guy. And I had all this fucking anger pushed down. It right. came out either in the gym or this man is the angriest, angriest exerciser I've ever seen in my entire life. Not anymore. You saw me yesterday. Yeah, but that's because there was nobody in the gym for you to be angry at. I don't do that anymore. Though. So what he used to do in the gym is he would get in the gym, he would pick out a random person, someone he's never probably never spoken to his entire life. Never. And made up things about that person. Like they were saying something about him or saying something about his family to make him angry when he worked out so he could get through his workout. There was one time. I also picked out, I would pick out somebody in shorts I didn't like. I'd be like, look at those stupid You hate shorts. shorts. He doesn't own a single pair of shorts. I Listen, dude. I want you to know, I told your mom, because it's getting hot in Vegas, and I've been doing a lot of squats and deadlifts. I go, I'm buying some shorts. Our morning hike, I'm going to be wearing shorts. And she was like, I'm filming every single one. Yeah. How, how pale are my legs? See-through. <laughs> That's how pale they are. See-through. That's how pale they are. Yeah. Um, how good is my... Let me just see. Also looks see-through. You're just pale. Matter. You're look pale all the way look around. Look at that bad boy. You're Dude. pale all the way around. The, yo, Joe. 53. Did you call you, me Joe? I said yo, but it came out as Joe. The 53, that's not bad, dude. Right there. Is that what you thought I'd look like at 53? Bing, bing, boom, bing. For those of you listening, you're missing out. Go ahead. I don't even know what we're talking about. Uh, tell me about you moving out of LA. Um, But yeah, so it's it's bittersweet. Like it's sweet because there's a lot of things. Like I'm just living somewhere else is going to be different. It's going to be nice. Um. LA is just too expensive right now. Yeah. Like, you know, it is for a reference, like we're living in a three bedroom apartment currently. 
and paying just above three thousand for that, which honestly in LA is actually, I'm gonna tell you, dude, pretty outstanding. In LA, you have and it's a new building. Mm-hmm. Not it's not like the greatest area of all time. It's right. just a little north of where I really wanted to be. Um, but but for, dude, it, it's a your apartment is massive and all, it's brand new renovated new appliances in an um, LA to pay 3200 for that I know people around the country are like that's what more than my mortgage and I get it totally but, but in for LA, people in lot. LA or people in New York getting a three-bedroom apartment a nice one in the city is impossible like you just don't find it like a three-bedroom starts at 42 in LA something like that yeah dude so yo the fact that I don't even want to tell you what we paid for that place on Curson. I know what you paid paid for that place on Curse. Fucking crazy. Yeah, and I know what you paid for Columbia Square too. Right, which is way less than what a year paying way less. So it was a great deal. Right, and so now we're moving to a three bedroom house for like seven hundred dollars less. Never lived in before. Yeah, never lived in. Brand new. We're the first people to live in it. We don't have to live in someone else's stank. Yeah. Which is awesome. Yeah. Like there was one house we went and saw that we walked into and I could smell dog on the second floor. And I was like, not a bad dog. Yeah. Like you cleaned it, but there was definitely a dog who peed on this carpet at some point. In time. Right, right, right. And I don't got to deal with that. There's no carpet in this house except the stairs, which I think is the perfect place for carpet. So you don't slip down the stairs. You don't slip down the stairs, yeah. but also so the dog is okay going up and down the stairs because we have a little 13 pound demon who loves going upstairs. He hates going down them. Yeah. He will run upstairs, but will need to be picked up going downstairs. Because he's got no coordination. Hilarious. And when he jumps down the back of his body, he's a little sausage. Does it flip over? No. Well, so his but he tries to like, he can't fit on a stair going straight down, right? So his body comes to the side, but then sometimes his ass will come too far forward and just take him down the stairs. That's hilarious. So dude. I have to make sure he doesn't fall down the stairs. Yeah. But they're carpeted, which is great. And it's like two flights. So if he falls down the first flight, he lands on like a little landing, and he doesn't. You know, go down all 20 stairs. Yeah. Is that, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, we're in a quiet neighborhood where, you know, we have everything that we're going to need. What are you excited about? What are you bummed about? What are you nervous about? Like, uh, excited to just, you know, we're going to finally get our own podcast space like this. Yeah. Um, to hit the ground running to really like take our stuff to the next level. Yeah. Um, I'm not a homeowner, but I'm excited to be living in a house yep. without my parents, which I think for me at 26 is. Well, you haven't lived with us since you were 18. But not in a house is what right, I'm saying. Right, right, like, right. Like, a, like a legitimate house. Right, right. I lived in apartments. Um, so living in a house at 26 for me is awesome. something uh, is a way ahead of the curve that I had set for myself. Um, I'm bummed that I'm going to be leaving everything I know, like all the people that I've met. Everybody that I know, the schools that I know, the restaurants that I know, the the parks that I know, you know, especially like my friends. Like I have people who are my ride or dies who I've known since I was seven. Yeah. And I'm only going to be a four hour drive away yep. I, and I'm going to be an hour flight. Um, so it's not going to be something that is way too drastic, but it's going to be hard to wake up and know that there's nobody I can call. Hey, you want to hang out tonight or you want to go out tonight or you want to come over and watch a movie with me and Amon, my girlfriend? There's nobody I can call for that. So let me ask you something because for me, that was always exciting. So for me, you know, whenever I moved, I moved from my house my, when I went to school, I went to Texas, to San Antonio. Nobody had ever, nobody in my family had ever been in San Antonio, right? I, it, I wanted to go somewhere fresh start. And is is it exciting for you to do that? Yeah, it, 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 you know why I think, by the way. And I, when I moved from San Antonio to Seattle, it was the same thing. Nobody, I had nobody. Right. I, because one of the reasons I like doing that is one. I always felt like if you moved somewhere where a bunch of people know you, or you stay in your hometown, mm-hmm. it's hard to change. Because the people around you are know you as this dude. Right. And so they'll always see you as this dude. Right. Right. And I always like, if I felt like there was a time for a change in my life, I thought, I, if I'm going to change, I need to change somewhere where nobody knows me. So they're like, oh, this is just who this guy is. Right. It's not like, dude, I know you're not that guy. 
You know, you know what I mean? Your right. high school friends see you as how you were in high school. That's how they know you. And so I always was like, if I wanted to change going somewhere to start fresh where nobody fucking knew me and I could find some friends there. If I was like, man, I don't want to hang around meatheads anymore, but right. it's really hard. Everybody else here knows me as somebody who hangs out with meatheads. So if I start hanging out with this person, they're going to be like, you know, right. So well, I, I, I mean, for me in LA, I feel like over the last couple of years, I did a lot of changing, but I did a lot of changing, but also those people who I've known since high school, I, Truthfully, I'm trying to think of how many people I'm friends with that I was friends with in high school. Mm -hmm. And that is a very, it's probably a number I can count on my hand. Is that, a, is that hard for you? Yes and no. Like, like, look, I still know a lot of people that I went to high school with that I still like, if we see each other, I'm like, Hey, what's up? Or we talk to each other on social media and stuff like that. But if I think of the group of people that I hung out with in high school that, you know, came over to the house that you guys met, mm -hmm. that we all went to prom together, that group. There's not a single person from that group. Yeah. But that happens, dude. No, that's, and that's yeah, what I'm yeah. saying, but that's okay. It's like, for me, like, I, I I never thought about the moving to make friends, like, you know, so people, you know, I can make a different name for myself in a yep. different city. I am who I am. Do you know what I'm saying? I've mm -hmm. done a lot of work and a lot of changing over the last, since high school. And so for me, like, I don't have anybody who is like, oh, I know who that, I know who he is. When he does something different, I know that's not him. Yeah. The people who I'm with now, are the people that I've picked up at, or not picked up, but the people that I've met since I've changed. Yeah. And the people that I've met and the people that I've left since I've changed think that I'm still the same person. Yeah. But that for me is like, I don't think, I don't think I need a whole new city for that. And I don't think anybody, you know, I don't think necessarily anybody does. Yeah. Um, but for me, it's just like, I think it's just the familiarity that I'm going to miss. Yeah. The most. For sure, dude. You know what I'm saying? So like, for sure. Like, obviously there's, there's things that'll be familiar in Vegas, like, you know, there's targets and there's restaurants that I like yeah, that I yeah, can yeah. still go to and you guys are there. And so, you know, that we're, of course on the list, we're below target for Iman, You're yeah. definitely below target. <laughs> I, I'm below target. Okay. You know how, you know how much fun she has in target We for her birthday. I could be like, yo, we're going to go to target. You can spend as much time as you want in there. She would spend all fucking day in target. How is like there? Are, are we going to take a couple mushrooms and go to meow wolf? Yo, so I already went to Meow Wolf. I know. I would love to do hallucinogens in that fucking place. But now you... There is there is a place, there is literally... A, okay, so Meow Wolf, for those of you who don't know, there's two different exhibits. There's one in Vegas and there's one in uh, uh, Santa Fe yeah. in New Mexico. Yeah. And it's just like... Right now it's called Omega Mart and that's the art installation that's in there. So it's like this weird supermarket with like these really weird items and f weird flavored things and... There's some things you can buy and actually consume. Like yeah. I bought, I bought a cola from there and drank it. It's a pretty good cola, actually. I'm not gonna lie, like it was pretty delicious. But so inside, it's like all these crazy, like kind of psychedelic art installations and stuff like that. There is one room that, no joke, is probably the size of the room we're in right now. Yeah. It is the perfect visual representation of hallucinogens for people who have never done it. Really? You know how I can never explain to people. You can never explain to people. What do you see on hallucinogens? If you've never done it, it's really hard for me to tell you. This is the easiest way. Everything's pulsing. Like, I don't know if that makes sense. Like the walls moving? Yeah, like, you know, you know what yeah. I mean. Like, oh, yeah, so like the wall, like it'll, be, it'll almost be like a ripple effect. Like something dropped in the middle of it and the rest of it just kind of waves out. Do you know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. There's a room in Meow Wolf that is that. It's this big? It is this big, but it's not... It, how they did it is so cool. It's like different panels layered on top of each other that have just lights going through it. So it makes it look like it's like a pulsating room. That's awesome. But it's all just lights and different layers of, 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 of art. It's how so, many people get to walk in at one time? As uh, Dude, there, was, there had to be 300 people in there. In this tiny room? Oh, no. In this thing? Yeah. Oh, God, no. It probably fits like five or six people. But the installations are all within each other. So you oh, just it. walk around and, and and live it. It's fucking cool. I could. I, we were in there for two and a half hours, and it felt like 40 minutes. Are you? There's a couple things coming up in Vegas. The F1 amazing. race. Oh, the Grand Super Prix. Super Bowl. But guess what? Like, Are, are you going to be doing... Guys, I'm, I have a residency now in May starting every Monday. Are you going to come down and do that? I would love to come and like practice my song, especially if you're going to be doing weird shit. Yeah, I would love for you to come down and practice a song. That's I'm awesome. Down. I'm down. Okay. But, you know, the Grand Prix, first of all, like as how cool would it be to be renting out a hotel room 
to go out on a balcony. By the way, there's only a, a couple hotels in Vegas that have balconies. Mm-hmm. Cosmo, Caesars. I honestly don't know the answer to this. I'm sure there's more. No, well, it's not that many. It's a little, it's a it's a liability thing. Because to have that's why most hotel windows don't open. Oh yeah, I do I I do know that because especially in Vegas, I'm sure we'd have a couple jumpers. A couple. I mean, if you lose, if, yeah. yeah, if you lose, if you went with a budget and lost all your budget first night and got way too wasted, like, dude, I remember going I to it. Vegas. I lose my budget every time I fucking go to Vegas, like I, that. When, I, when we were going to Vegas in the '90s, dude, and I was going, and, and it was the brothers and cousins, right? When I guys, when I reference brothers and cousins, like, all three of my brothers, older brothers, lived in LA at the time. Yep. And you know, on my dad's side, um, his brother has four kids but they're practically like my uncles too for sure well jess is your not your uncle. Uh, yes 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 uh, and my my cousin jessica has never lived in la but the three male cousins michael scott and gary so we all used to go together and we'd go and there were we i mean at the time who had money to spend scott scott Scott, Definitely Scott. Scott was on TV. He was on a TV show called Party of Five. Sorry to intervene. You know what's crazy? Huh. I've been like just doing my usual shit and like watching TV. We play this game called Jackbox, which is like a fun, like, it's, like a bunch of different games in it, but it's like a little trivia game. Yeah. Do you know how much Scott Wolf has been popping up in my pop culture recently? It's crazy. He's been popping up in TV shows too. Yo, on TikTok, he did like a medical show. I don't yeah. know, like the night, night shift. shift. That's been popping up on my TikTok. I watched BoJack Horseman, which, by the way, if you don't He was watch, on there, right? If you don't watch BoJack Horseman, just for anybody, if you like adult animations, this is the most profound, one of the most profound TV shows I've ever watched. Better than Archer? Archer's not profound. It doesn't give you life lessons. It doesn't make you think. BoJack Horseman is, is solely based on the city of Hollywood. Yeah. About a person who came... Who came up, came from nothing, got into a major TV show, and then what Hollywood did to him. Mm -hmm. And it's so crazy because you go and see his path and who he met in his past and then who he meets in the future. It's just, it's such a profound show. Like, there are some episodes that are hard to watch. No shit. Because they're so emotional and you become so attached to these people and these characters. It's only six, six seasons of 10 to 12 episodes each. It might be the greatest animated show ever created. Whoa. It is so fucking good. Whoa. If you are looking for something that is deep and I wanna thought sl- provoking and thought provoking and emotional, watch Bojack Horseman. I'm gonna like, so Scott Wolf was in that. And he was literally Scott Wolf. So he was a wolf, like an actual wolf just Hold named that. Scott. Okay, yeah. And he was next to Matthew Fox, who was, was a fox. Who was a fox. I wonder if they had Matthew do his voice. I don't know, because it made him sound fucking crazy. Like they made him sound like he was a, a fox with rabies. Yeah. Which was pretty funny. Yeah. Scott was himself, yeah. which I thought was super funny. Yep. Um, he came up in a trivia question the other day on a game that we like to play. Scott, get out of my head, goddammit. Yeah. <laughs> Hilarious. It's, but yeah, it's super funny that he just keeps popping up so randomly in all these just like he and I are, fixtures. You know, he and I are, are um, <sighs> writing um a show for him to star in. Oh, really? Yeah. Fuck yeah. You know, I'm going to tell you something, dude, about Scott. And all of our brothers, all my brothers and cousins have a good sense of humor. Yeah. Um, And I'm not, I'm not, I don't, I'm not putting Scott above any of them. Yes, he is. But as far as the public, nobody knows how funny he is because he's never. He's always done serious roles. Yeah, they just want him to cry and look cute with his dimples, which he does. Which, which he's you great do, at, dude. by the you way. You are so cute good at it. as fuck. Yep. You got those dimples. You're cute. And if you've ever seen him run, he run. It's just so cute to watch those little legs. go. <laughs> he seems like the kind of guy who runs like this. Like yeah. He runs oh. sideways. But not, not hands up, but I feel like he runs like this, but now doesn't run like this. I feel like he runs like side to side. Yo, that's he's he's gonna hate this clip, but we're gonna post it just because of that. Can't wait for you to see it. But I will tell you this. Fun one of he needs to to he needs a chance to show everybody how funny he is. I was we just he's saw so fucking we just funny. saw him recently for your oldest brother's sixtieth birthday. Yeah. And I was sitting in a I I haven't sat down and had a conversation with Scott. Yeah. In years. I don't see Scott very often. I see Scott probably once every 
couple years. Like, it usually ranges. Once a year. Not usually. Really? Ever. Okay. Like, it's usually, well, he lives in Park City, so, yeah. like. You see Gary once a year, easy. Well, Gary lived in L.A. Yeah, mostly. yeah, yeah. Scott, and Michael, yeah. Yeah, and Michael. Scott hasn't lived, or, yeah, Scott hasn't lived in L.A. in 10 years, yep. probably. Yeah, So, you know, I see Scott when I see Scott. And, you know, I hear from him on birthdays and yep. text him every now and then. Um, but we were sitting and having a conversation, and it was me, Scott Wolf, your brother Jonathan. We were just kind of all shooting the shit. Scott was making me laugh. Dude, he's legit. Good lord, he's legit funny. He's legit yeah, funny. Absolutely. But all, uh, you know, what's funny. Our, our that our family is it's humor and it's dark humor. Yeah. Oh yeah. It's oh. super, super, super dark oh, humor. Yeah. yeah. The the mom jokes are so dark. Yeah. So, I'm so I'm so happy I'm not in that group chat anymore. There's a brothers. Yeah. There's, I think they call it the Wolf Pack. Yeah, the there's pack. A, there's a as a brothers and cousins group chat, and I remember being in it for a little bit, and eventually I was like, I gotta get out of here. One, some of the humor was dark. I, lo- I love the humor, but two, you guys are fucking annoying. You guys text that group chat so much more than you should. <laughs> Holy shit! Don't you guys have jobs and shit? Like, no, you know you guys, me. What job? Guys, I don't yeah. have day job. How were you guys texting that group chat twenty four seven? Like, I'd wake up to no joke, like sixty five messages. I'm like, what are you old heads doing up that late? Like, this, or up early. Or up early. Yeah. yeah, you guys are up at like 5 a.m. Nobody's up at 5 a.m. Out to get the early bird special from Denny's. No, dude, nobody. And why are you doing this? I don't know. It just seemed, seemed appropriate. Yeah, we're not. No, nobody's up at 5 a.m. You are I walking the dog. Yeah, not 5, 6, though. You get up at 5 and leave at 6. Sometimes you guys I get do up in at, the summer. Sometimes you guys get up at 4 because it gets too hot. Yeah, I do in the summer. You're old. No, dude, I'm a fucking machine. You're old. Oh, yeah, that looks old. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Chris, thanks for all the lighting in here. You really see the gray in his beard. I appreciate uh, it. Listen, I have a lot of gray in my beard. Yeah, I know. Uh, but you know what? I, I, I'll I tell you, I, I, ha- I, I don't color my hair anymore. It's gray. I do color my beard a little bit. When I go on stage. Yeah, because when that full beard goes gray and there's, there's, there's... Well, your mom was like, look, you know... Um, you know what's weird, though? Yeah. Your whole beard, like, you're starting to go great. Your soul patch is still living living live, which is And my mustache. Yeah. You know what's crazy is that the mustache and the little bit here soul haven't patch. gone gray. Soul patch. Yeah. I, 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 I'm I, thinking about just rocking the soul patch recently. Oh, don't do that. Yeah, I'm thinking about it. Okay, do it. Get a monocle and an eye patch. And a beret. I feel like and it's, a cape. I feel like it's more And some really dealer. short shorts. I feel like and it's some more... cowboy boots and a wand. None none of those were That's why. No, I feel like this was more drug dealer than Mr. Peanut. That's drug dealer? Soul patch? Yeah, look at Shaggy. Shaggy's got a soul patch and a, and a Shaggy's goatee. not a drug dealer? Dude. How do you stop know? Stop it. Shaggy's not a, listen. Tell me Shaggy's not high all the time. Yo, drug dealer maybe. No, not maybe. He wants a chocolate sauce That's and fine. anchovy. Pizza. That's fine. So both Shaggy and Scooby are stoners. Let's throw that out. But he's not a drug dealer, dude. That dude is not a drug dealer. How do you know? Could be the friendliest drug dealer of all time. No, dude. He's that that dude is not a drug. That's not what drug dealers. You you obviously grew up in an age where you got legal weed. Well, I, I, well, I mean, look, I had a sketchy ass drug dealer when I was in high school. This high case, school. Yeah, I smoked weed. I've been, I've been smoking weed since I was fourteen. High school, you had a drug dealer. How else was I gonna get weed? Well, let me give me three guesses on his name. Okay, first of all, his his first name you could probably guess. His last name I could give you a thousand guesses, and yeah, you yeah, would yeah, yeah, yeah. never guess. I'm not gonna give him you his, his last first, name. Though. Is his first name Cody? Nope. Feels like a good drug dealer name. It does feel like a good drug dealer name. What does it start with? N. N. Yeah. A guy first name that starts with N. Nevin. It's not even a name. It just sounded like you were going to say Neville and never, and then you just kind of stopped. I thought maybe Nevin sounded like a good drug dealer name. Nathan. Nope. Okay, go ahead. Nate. No. That's the same name, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> That's the same fucking name. What's um, his name? Nikki. I'd have never guessed Nikki. I know. But so Nikki I met through a friend, uh, a girl that I had a small thing with in high school. Um she was, or he was her best friend. They were rave buddies, yeah. but also I met him and she was like, oh, he can get you weed. And I was like, Nikki, great. We're going to be great friends. Um, he was semi sketchy. Remember all those times I told you before I went out to a party to a friend's house that I was going to Seven Eleven? Yeah. Yeah. He lived down the street. 
So from us? Like, yeah, so I just walked to him. Let me just tell you, first of all, I love how you dropped these tidbits of shit I didn't know. You want to hear another tidbit of shit? Yeah. I used to deal weed. What? Out of my Hollywood apartment when I moved out. The the one on Hollywood Boulevard. Right after I moved out of Curson during the during the pandemic, I needed some extra bread. So I started selling some, selling some weed on the side. Where would you get that weed? From my drug dealer. From that dude, name not mentioned? Yeah, 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 yeah. The one that I, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. D- and so I was, I would, I would, I would take also, but it wasn't like, it wasn't like I was the source. I would take orders. I would get what they want. I would, I would charge them a little bit extra so that I was at least making some bit of a profit, but I mainly sold to friends. And like, were you selling basically to pay for your weed? No, I was just, can I be honest? I was just selling just so I had a little extra money in my pocket. But yeah, you're right. Once I sold a certain amount, I could pay for my next pickup. How much do you think, how long were you doing it and how much were you making? Six months and like I said, most people I sold to were friends. So I was only making. Why weren't they just going to the weed store? Because uh, the prices that I had were so much better. Oh. And there's no tax. Right, 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 right. How much do you think you were making a month? I only, uh, I'm trying to think because it depended. There was my uh, the buddies who I was selling to, if they went through it slower, you know what I'm saying? Like mm-hmm. it, like profit was slower, so it just kind of depended. But uh, I don't know. I would probably do it four or five times a month. Probably just make like a quick extra 150 bucks total. Yeah. And like oh, I said, it, it was it was, yeah, yeah. it was nothing crazy. Like I wasn't like. Pushing pounds. Yeah, dude. Because when you said you were sold weed, I was like, that. yeah, that's I, not a... I was a middleman yeah, more, yeah. but then there were some times where I would buy extra from my guy, and then if I had, like, I have a, I have a buddy, if his friends needed something, I would overcharge the fuck out of them. But dude. also, I but also I have a scale with a solo cup, and, right. like, I, you know, I... At a certain point in time, so crazy. at a certain point in time, if you came over to my apartment, you, there was there was a drawer with different weights and different bags. Do you, do you and remember a scale on the inside? Can, can I tell you? You know, over the last couple months, I've been telling you, tell me some things that I don't know. I just thought about that, like right yeah, now. This fits in that fucking category. Yeah, I yeah. used to sell weed. Fits in that category. Yeah, yeah, it's perfect. Can I tell you the first time I ever bought weed? Okay. First time I ever went to a drug dealer. I was in San Antonio. It was I was a drug dealing. Drug dealing in Texas just sounds scary. I was a sophomore in college. I had got, I'd gotten weed before, and I had been I had bought ecstasy, but from from a another college student, right? Right, not from the source. So I went to this dude's apartment in San Antonio, and I was with my buddy Chris Twardowski. Say his last name again. Twardowski. Twardowski. Yeah, Tward. It's an unfortunate last name. Nah, the Tward, dude, twat, great the, guy. See, I see. He, he seems like a guy who had a great sense of humor. Twardowski, yeah, dude. A lot of most of my friends had a good sense of humor. That's true. So I was with Chris, and uh, I was like, "Hey, he told me to come in by myself. You wait out here." And I, you know, at this time, I dressed like a, you know, I had khaki shorts, a frat boy, khaki shorts. I was wearing loafers, polo shirt, polo shirt. Hundred percent frat boy. I had a little bit of a, a Jerry curl mullet. Mullet. Jerry yeah. curl. What the fuck? Are, do you, you know, know what, what a, you know what a Jerry curl? Do is? you know what a Jerry yeah, curl? Yeah, I used is? to get Jerry curls when I had long hair coming out of the shower. It's not a Jerry curl. Dude. Yeah, but some mullets have Jerry curls. No, it's not a Jerry curl. A Jerry curl is usually. Who else some, am I getting the Jerry curls from? Can I tell you? Something, I'm not getting dude, it from the Asian side you, of you my have family. You a Jufro. A Jerry curl is something that usually we're referring to in the in the black community. It's the whole situation. Just the little things at the bottom aren't jerry curls. No, it was like a full... B- Never mind. I'll okay. explain it later. Okay, yeah. But, okay, so um, I walk upstairs. I knock on this dude's door. And this dude is sketch as fuck. Most drug dealers are. So I come in. I'm already nervous. He's got this Doberman mm. that is just trained on me the whole time. That's Just good dog. staring at me. And... Um, I walk in and I just stand by the door and he's like, come on in, sit down. And I was like, Oh, I was so nervous. There was just such tension in the air. Yeah. And, um, he was watching something like some daytime talk show 
on like not Springer, but truck Springer. dealers apartments are maybe, the weirdest. Maybe Springer. Yeah, truck dealers apartments are the weirdest. weirdest. It's like a whole different dimension when you walk in. And there. we like, sit on this couch that's like suede or velvet or something <laughs> velour, and we sit in that just sinks. Did he have little dirt, danglers in. on the curtains, kind of shit? Like I, I don't remember that. I remember there was like weed and shit all over the glass table in front, and he sits down on the couch. And he's got this dog trained. The dog, if I'm sitting on the couch, the dog is right here at the arm, this far away from me, just staring at me. Yeah, it's got to make sure it's trained that if you try to make a run for it without paying, you're going to get bit. I don't think he's worried about you not paying. He's worried about you robbing him. Oh, that's it's not a not pay, paying situation. That dog's close enough to where you could rip your face off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I, uh, I'm just sitting there as still as I can be because I don't want to make any sudden movements. I don't know what this dog is, what the situation is. Right. And, um, this dude, he go, we talk for a little bit. He's sussing me out a little bit. Um, he and, susses you out because he's got to make sure you're not a cop. Yeah. He's sussing me out. I, I get what the deal is. Yeah. He knows I'm not a cop. I look like I'm 12 years old, but he doesn't know exactly like, what a cop would say. No, <laughs> he, he, so he finally gets up and he goes into the other room. And as soon as he leaves the room, the dog stays there, but as soon as that door shuts where he goes into the other room where the drugs are, the dog just growls the entire time. Mm. So I, I am trying so hard not to even move, dude. Not to reach for the glass of water he put down in front of me. My hands are on my legs. On right. My, right, right here on my pants. Right. I'm not even sliding them down. My hands are on my pants. Just sitting like this. Dog, right here, Doberman. Right? And I'm like, oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God. I'm sitting there, and the guy finally comes out. And he goes, sorry that took so long. It took a while. But he was, obviously, this was a message of some sort. Or he was just fucking with me. Because, you know, he was in there. Not Look, I was just buying, like, a at the time, probably a 40 sack. All you got to do is walk in, pick it up, and bring it out. Yeah, also, it's supposed to, like, for me, like, it's just supposed to be ready. Like, drug dealers aren't supposed to take a long time. Right. Like, so, well, one thing about drug dealers also, like, look, man, they can't, they have to keep you in the apartment for a while. The smart ones do. Be, or else your neighbors see people walking in, in and, and walking out. out, walking in, walking out, right? Yeah, like the neighbors I live right next to right now. Right, exactly. So, okay. it's so obvious, right? And so, growling, 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 guy comes out, puts the weed down. And um, when I take my hands off of my pants, there's I was sweating so Sweat much. Sweat stains. There was f handprints. That's so funny. I was so fucking scared, dude. And I went downstairs afterwards, and I got handprints on my pants. And my buddy was like, hey, "Dude, what? Take your fucking." He's laying into me. Take your fucking time. I'm out here for like thirty minutes, just walking up and down this sketchy street. I go, dude, <coughs> you have no idea. I, my asshole fell out of my body. I was so scared. Right. Are you kidding me yeah. right now? You know what my least favorite thing is about drug dealers who like, for me, like I always enjoyed more like just meeting a dude like I like somewhere like on a random ass corner. Like I never liked go. Yeah. I never liked going into someone's apartment no. because not only am I subject to like having to stay there so they don't look sus, but I also hate the drug dealers who try to be your friends. Like, hey, you wanna you wanna sit here and maybe like smoke a little bit or play some video dude, games? I'm like, like, I don't dude. wanna see you play Call of Duty, yeah. Travis. I'm like, fuck no, dude. Yeah. Why am I here? Yeah. To we're, get drugs. We're Great. Not, we're not friends. Nah. Like that's not how this works. Nah. Like I, you don't get to be friends with your clientele. Yeah, but every but here's the thing. They're used to everybody wanting to be their friends because they have drugs. Yeah, that's right. So they're but, like, this dude obviously wants to talk to me. Right. No, no, I do not, Travis. I would like to get what I paid for. You know, you know, your uncle Jonathan went to jail for selling drugs. Yeah. That time he told me he went to the desert. He told my parents that too. They were like, Jonathan's not getting any cell reception in the desert. And I was like, Oh my God. I can't believe they bought that. Well, they, what are, what else are they going to buy? He, the, the, him selling drugs and being in jail would, would have been, I could have given them a hundred guesses and they would have never guessed that. But I will Did tell you, tell them. Yeah. Yeah. He told oh, me. Okay. That's the reason I'm talking about it on a podcast. Got it. Fair enough. Yeah. Um, that's a good point. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, dude. Fair enough. Yeah. I'm not talking about yeah. it on a podcast unless he's, but, but, um, it's so funny. I will tell you something about the, about Jonathan though. Jonathan 
And, and Jonathan is a legitimately funny guy. Agreed. All your all your brothers are funny. Yeah. But Jonathan Dan not so much, but Oh, he's going to be so unhappy. Oh, I can't that. wait to post it. Dan, you heard what I said. Yeah. This is this is payback for you bullying me when I was a 13-year-old in the driveway when we were playing basketball. Dude, just continued to throw elbows. Yeah, dude, he did. He we put, we talked about that at He Adam's, pushed you. Oh, did you? We talked Dan and I talked about it at Adam's Yeah, he 60th. was he told hey, me he was like I'm not letting that dude win. A 100% like and I remember cuz we were talking about it and we were talking about cuz Jonathan just had a kid whose name is Zach and Zach Zach's going to be big like for sure and Zach's going to be an athlete. He already is. Oh yeah, no doubt. Yo, and dude, so he's I, gonna I, be bigger than Jonathan. He might be bigger than me. I'm I'm the I'm the second tallest wolf alive right now. You, he, you he, behind Rick? You behind Rick? Cause Rick's six five. Yeah. But he's shrinking as time goes on. So I will eventually be the tallest. Yeah. Here, fuck that, Rick. Yeah. <laughs> eat that. Eat that shit. <laughs> but he was like, Yo, by the time Zach is sixteen, he's gonna be dunking on you. I'll go. No, no. I go. Do you remember when we used to play? When Thanksgiving came around and we used to play ball in the driveway, he goes, yeah. And I go, you remember what this asshole used to do to me? And I point at Dan and Dan was like, what I do? And I was like, do you remember how physical it used to be with me where I used to come up for a layup and you would just push me to the floor? And he goes, yeah. He goes, it's old man shit. Like, I, I'm not going to let you win or yeah. score. And I was like, yeah, exactly. That's what I'm doing to your kid, John. He goes, no, you're not. And I go, uh, uh-uh. I was like, I was like, if the uncle's got to do it to me, I get to do it to the other one. Like, that, Yo, that's not how dude, that works. Like Dan used to body you at Dan 13 used, Dan used to bully me like yeah but by the time 16 hit and I was over six feet he stopped bullying me. well there was no more body in you up I no think, there was, but I was still a, like a skinnier person yeah. but even at six you foot, still are I still am a very skinny person yeah but even at like once six foot hit Dan was like well I'm out like that but that was also the last time that anybody other than you or Jonathan wanted to play basketball with me in the front yard yeah it was usually just John because John was the basketball player, or is the basketball player, for out sure. of the four of you, for no sure. doubt. For sure. Um, but you're like Adam Sandler from Grown Ups. This dude doesn't miss a bank shot. Like, <laughs> you set him up from anywhere on the fucking court, he's going to hit a bank shot. It's the craziest fucking thing. Yeah, dude, I have that geometry down. Yeah, it's nuts. Bank shots and picks and free throws. Yeah. I'm your guy. Oh, picks for me, too. I Well... I was the tallest growing up, so I was always playing center. Yeah, I remember. So I, I look if I, dude, can I tell you something? Wait, wait, hold on. If if you if screens and picks counted as assists, I would have been the all-time assist leader in the state of California. Listen, dude, you remember how many picks I? Remember when we played with Stephen Rockland? Can I just how tell you something? How many picks I sent? How many layups he scored just because I was there? Can I just tell you? You sound like the whitest person in the world. That is a YMCA stat right there. Facts. <laughs> and I would be, and I would be the that king. That is a fucking straight would, up YMCA. And I would be the king of it. I would be the king of the no, pick dude, stat. Let me tell you something right now. There's some dude at the Y in Hollywood who's wearing goggles right now, who sets a pick. He's always like pick, 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 pick. He goes in. He'll go home and he'll tell his wife how many picks he set, how many rebounds he got, how many assists. He was like, I didn't foul anybody. Like this dude played good D. Like you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. Well, he's like that, that. You know what's funny? That guy is me for real, for real. Because I'll leave, I'll leave, and I'll call you, and I'll be like, Yeah, it wasn't a great day today. But I'll usually call you when I'm done playing oh, dude, basketball. I love it, dude. I love and you. Give me your stats. I and love it. I usually either play really good defense and can't score the ball, or I can score and I can't play defense, and it's one or the other. And usually it's the playing defense and can't score kind of day. And those are the days that make me upset. Yeah, dude, but I love it. I love it when you call. Yeah. I, 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 I got to tell you, man, I um, I think the thing I miss the most from you guys being young is I loved going and watching or coaching. It didn't matter. Right. But when you guys, when you all played on teams. Right. And I, I'll tell you why. There was a, and one of the things, it's, it's what, you know, when people have, when their voicemail is like just their kid laughing. Right. There's a pure joy that you lose eventually. It's just life beats it out of you. Right. But that kids have in, in a kid's laughter is pure joy. Right. Right. And at a certain age before you got, before, you know, and it, it, it was, it lasted longer when I was a kid. But right now, there's so much pressure on everybody that people put on their kids to play sports. But and, and, yeah, just a pressure for kids in general. It's and pressure brought on by their peers and social media and stuff like that. It's a lot. It's a different pressure situation. Yeah. Um. But the the pure joy was something. I'll tell you something. My dad said to me. 
that rang so true. We were talking about parenting and the difference between parenting when he was doing it and when, mm-hmm. and when I did it. Um, but he said, you know, the difference between when I parented and when you parent, and even more so now, mm-hmm. is he said, you know, when you came home from school and shut the door, your, out fi- your outside influences were over. I got to, well, your mom and I got to parent. Right. And guide you however. So the majority of your day was spent with us as your guides, Mm -hmm. as your influences. And he said, now that's 100% reversed. Parents, unless they want to take the phones out of their kids' hands, unless they want to get them out from in front of the screens, their influence has been minimized. It's all outside influence. It's all looking at Instagram pages about... Look, man, when you you didn't want to go to Coachella this year, but then yesterday you were like, I kind of wish I had gone to Coachella. It's just like a, it's not nostalgia is not the but right word. But it's a word. FOMO thing, FOMO, dude. FOMO, yeah, because I've also I've been to five. Yeah, but but like, but like without social media, without those posts, I wouldn't remember that it's Coachella weekend and see all the photos. And and you still and and yeah. there isn't that negative. Oh, I wish or yeah. the, any kind of bad feeling about yourself. There's so often. So often social media gives you a bad feeling about yourself as opposed to making you feel good about yourself. A hundred percent. And that, that's for, that's for boys and girls across 100%. the world because with all the, you know, the models that all the girls look up to and, you know, you see the magazines and they're like, this is what your body should look like, but they have no idea that your body is your body and you should be happy no matter what. But also all of those images are heavily photoshopped. I will like, tell you this. Though, it's, it's hard for, I can understand hard for young girls to see that and go, well, that's what I want and see no way to it because those images are morphed. True. But I will tell you this. And your mom and I were talking about this the other day. When I was growing up, 0% chance that anybody, any woman or girl who in my high school or whatever college, even who was even remotely felt like they had an extra pound, 0% chance they're wearing a bikini a tight shirt, a half shirt. Mm-hmm. And so as for as much as body dysmorphia as there is, I really, I really am happy to see that younger women are showing their, and I don't mean this, in, but are comfortable enough with their body oh, to wear what they want. Like bikinis come in sizes now that I never knew they came in when I was growing up mm-hmm. because nobody that size would have worn a bikini. Right. I, so I, I do think like as much as, as social media is bad for that image, there is something that's happened. Well, yeah, because there's also those like like Lizzo for me is a great. I love her. By she's way. awesome. Like I love her. I love for her. me, she's a great example of body positivity. She knows that she is not a small girl or a small woman, and she's it, she embraces it, and so she wants to just bring out that confidence in everybody else yeah. that is her size yeah. that she has in herself, and also it's people that aren't her size, but people that are still aren't comfortable in their body. Yeah. She's trying to bring out that positivity. And it's crazy for me to see people online that are like, oh, you know, we never asked for it. We never asked for her to be body positive. Let's be honest. No one actually finds her attractive. And I'm like, but how do you know that? But like people just, do. But people do. And yeah. also you're just saying that because society has this. Can I? Society has this this conformity that you can only find women who are of the right weight attractive. Yeah. But that's the thing is that's the thing about the world is there are people from all walks of fucking life and all different shapes and sizes that there is somebody for everybody. There, there also do. There are people like me who I, I, I for sure don't have a type, but my type, the number one thing of my type is confidence. confidence. And so like, I do find her attractive She's because one of the most confident people on this planet. Yeah, man. I I, I like that. I like that in a person. Her that, music's also fucking great. So, boy, so amazing. Yeah. There's, there's but I, I, I do like for me, that is attractive to me. Confidence. Uh, absolutely. Confidence too, you, but when you see a dude with a woman and you're like, how the fuck? Sometimes I walk down the street it's, and I'm like, you guys fuck? What it's, the hell? Listen, it's one of three things. It's money. Confidence. Or a huge dick. Oh, that was the yeah, third yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a great track. Yo, speaking of Coachella. I thought you were going to say speaking of huge <laughs> dicks. I was like, take it easy. I'm not going to gloat for myself on this podcast. Come on. Um, I did notice on your Crocs you have an eggplant emoji. I, did, <laughs> I just want to also point out. 
I didn't uh, choose it. Not, it was gifted to me. Not, not, it's not an emoji. What's it called? No. Uh, well, no, it's it's the it's the eggplant emoji, but Hilarious. they're called gibbets. I so saw, my, my girlfriend just bought me some Crocs. But again, I will say, I didn't buy that for I myself. It was king. gifted to me. Hint, I didn't hint, mention wink, wink. it to you yesterday, but I'm like, you got an eggplant on your Crocs, bro? You fucking bet I do. You you go on eggplant Croc? Big energy. You know what I'm saying? That is so <laughs> I forgot to mention that yesterday when we were walking. I was like, Celtics one, I recognize. Lightning, there's two Lightning McQueens on there one, by the way. Good yeah. Out. Yeah, there's um, a, a, a pit bull I a recognize. Pit bull, there's a Pokeball, there's a Coca Cola. And can. I was like, wait a second, what's with the eggplant? And, <laughs> and a Winnie the Pooh. Yeah, I don't um, know what that means. But have you heard about all the shit that's going down at Coachella? No. So last weekend, Coachella? So, so there's this Coachella didn't have the greatest Coachella. Lineup. It's why we didn't, like my girlfriend and I, didn't really look to buy tickets mm-hmm. because the headliners were eh. not your. Who's, who's the big headliner there? Well, for this weekend. It was, I think it was Bad Bunny. Yeah, okay, huge. Huge, but yep. also not my music, but would probably be a great show. Yeah, 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 yeah. I would go see Bad Bunny, to tell you the truth. Bad Bunny, um, Blackpink, and Blackpink is a K-pop band. Okay. It's an all-girls K-pop band. So I, I don't know anything about that, but huge. definitely not my thing. And Frank Ocean. I would go see Frank Ocean. Uh, wait, wait. But I heard he... Wait, yeah, yeah. So Frank was supposed to be 2020. And that 2020 lineup, by the way, but before COVID and before Travis Scott was a fucking menace at Astroworld, was Frank Ocean, Travis Scott, and uh, it was something crazy like The Killers or like an old school rock band. And mm-hmm. it was, I was like, yo, this is going to be fucking legit. And then COVID happened, right? And then 2022 was the next Coachella they did. Frank came out and said, hey, I won't be there for that one, but I am confirmed for 2023. Last weekend was weekend one. Frank, who is the Sunday night headliner, who is the last performer of the entire weekend, decides that he wanted to come out an hour late. His set's only an hour and a half. Mm. He can't go past his hour and a half because they have a curfew in India. I know Because that. they're pretty much in a residential neighborhood. That yep. polo ground is surrounded by homes. Yep. He came out with 30 minutes left on his set. Did a 30-minute set Sitting down. Well, he broke his foot or something. No, I, he didn't even want to go out in the first place. And they told him that he had to go out. But also he was like literally like sitting in a corner, just like just singing into the microphone, straight face, no emotion. Didn't give anybody a show. Like He oh, didn't fucking no. do anything. That's some Bob Dylan shit. Two days ago, Frank Ocean cancels. He is no longer performing to on Sunday at Coachella because of an prior ankle injury. He has dropped out after being confirmed for 2023. Who's uh, a, 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 a techno, not techno guy, an EDM house guy called Fred again. He's actually fucking awesome. Right. Like it's going to be a really good, usually don't see him on that big of a stage. Yeah. It's going to be a really good show, but the people who are coming on before him blink 182. Oh, I would love to see blink. I would have loved to have seen blink. Too. I'd love to see blink. Like, but I will say like that Coachella lineup was crazy, but for me, like, this whole lineup, I would have only gone to see Frank. Truthfully. Oh, you would have been mad. Yo. Yeah. But also, with how much shit he's getting online, I don't think Frank will ever perform ever again. I. Uh, Here's the thing, though. He's also so notorious for going MIA. Like, when I was in eighth grade, he released an album called Channel Orange. Great album. One of my fi- It might be in yeah. my top ten. Great album. Of all time. Great album. He didn't release another album until I was 22. Whoa. He fell off the face of the fucking earth. I wonder why. Everybody wondered why. And then randomly made an appearance on a Kanye album and on a Travis album before he even released his own music. Like he came in on that Life as Pablo album in 2015 in 2015 or 2016 for Kanye. Uh-huh. And then he came out in 2018 on a song called Stargazing for Travis on Astroworld. And then we didn't hear from him again for another three or four years. And then he just comes out randomly and drops this blonde album, which I loved. I think it was also great. Should I, should I get that one? Yeah, I think like, but so for me, it's a generational thing. My girlfriend, Amon is two years younger than me. Yeah. She loves blonde more than channel orange. I love channel orange more than I love blonde. You guys are in the same generation. Two years is not a generation. Yeah, okay. Thing. Fair enough. But yeah, you yeah. know what I mean? Like for me, channel orange just isn't beatable. Right. But for her, blonde isn't beatable. There are some great songs on I'll blonde. Give it's, it a listen. it's a really good album. Uh, but I don't think, like, but anybody who I ask who's younger than me says blonde. 
Anybody who I ask who's my age or older says Channel Orange. So that's why I say not generational, but it is definitely an, an age differential. Yeah. Um, but but uh, again, you guys are two years apart. That's correct. Not, correct. Yeah, yeah. But I, I, I would have been so mad going to Coachella. There are people, dude, weekend one, who camped out the night before to the entrance to the grounds. Not the campgrounds. The entrance to get into the stages at Coachella. Who camped out the night before. Because he hadn't played live in a long time. And the people... He's, he, I haven't. I don't remember the last time I heard of someone going to a Frank Ocean concert. Right. It's so been, people were like, we got to fucking get there for this. So people camped out the night before, slept outside the metal detectors. He must have been... They must have been so mad. And then got there at... Se- the, the grounds opened at like 8 a.m. They got to the main Coachella stage at 8 a.m. and sat there all day. Can I tell to you to get a 30 minute performance how, by a dude who didn't give a shit? Can I tell you, it is almost the exact same thing. Bob Dylan? When we when we went to see Bob Dylan and and McCartney and the Who and the Stones and Old Cella and Neil Young and. Um, Roger Waters. It was called Concert in the Desert, but for everybody, it's called Old Cella because it's Old Cella. Like that's exactly what it was. Same place that Coachella was host that held. Yeah, it was amazing. Yeah, and people came from fucking Canada, Every, fucking everywhere to I, see Bob Dylan. They waited. I would assume they came from everywhere to see any of this those guys. Fucking asshole! <laughs> Not only did he he only played two of his old songs. Hey, Bob Dylan. Nobody wants to hear any of your new songs. Dylan. Nobody likes your new shit. Nobody. No. 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 Nobody gives a fuck about your new new, and the old songs he rearranged, so nobody could understand what they were. That's so dumb. It's such a dick move. Yeah. But I wanted to ask you because we're we're Running wrapping up. First of all, we mentioned animated shows. Yeah. Give me your top four ever animated shows. I'm gonna list them off for you for me. Okay, ready? What do you think I'm gonna say? I'm gonna list mine. You go first. Uh, Family Guy. We're going one for one? Yep. Scooby-Doo. Ooh, that's on my list, too. I love Scooby-Doo. Yeah. I'm putting it's, Scooby-Doo second. Okay. Uh, well, oh, this isn't any particular order no. for me. Uh, BoJack Horseman, 100%. Ren and Stimpy. Ooh, that's a good one. Um, I got to go Family Guy just because the jokes are timeless. The, the, 100%. The references are perfect. It's hard to beat. And so my fourth one, I'm in between. The fourth one's so hard. I have so many other ones. Yeah, I have so many other ones, too. My four, this is why it's hard for me. And look, man, I'm I'm nostalgic. I would pick something that all of us used to watch together. Winnie the Pooh. Hey Arnold. Rugrats. Rugrats. SpongeBob. Uh, something like that. However, if I'm talking about thi- that, that would be nostalgia. Right. Uh, Cat Dog. That whole oh era, God. Doug. Doug. That whole era that me and you Rocko's and Trev. And, oh, Rocco's oh, and Kate. We used to all watch, right? So I'm taking nostalgia out of it, just for me. Okay. I have to... Th- it's either Animaniacs or The Simpsons. Ooh, good one. But I think I'd go The Simpsons. Yeah. Those are both Those are both good ones. Um, yeah, I've, if I'm taking nostalgia out of it, too, because that's what I was thinking for my fourth one, was right. picking something nostalgic. What would have been nostalgia for you? Dude, I remember literally, literally any of the ones you just named. I remember us watching me, you, Caitlin, and Trevor watching Nickelodeon and seeing the commercials for this bananas new show called SpongeBob SquarePants. God. And we would watch the commercials, and it when he started, who? And we can't finish it because we we wouldn't be able to air this, <laughs> right? No, 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 no. And yeah. so we were all like, we're, and you were three. Fucking that show. But is, you would, as soon as it came on, you would jump off the couch and you'd go, who? Yeah. All of you, who? That fucking, that theme song had me by a chokehold for most of my yeah, life. Dude, come on. But if I had to go, yeah, like for me, it's a toss up between SpongeBob, just because again, it's timeless and it's something that I watched in high school too and just yeah. like never get tired of or Archer because Archer is just yeah, dude. Cold, I th- thank you for inviting for dark showing me that. humor, and it's it is provocative. Also, it's and provocative. It's, it's an adult animation, so if, I, I would probably say Archer. Honorable mention, SpongeBob. Um, I, I can't believe you left American Dad out. It's hard for me for American Dad and Family Guy. Like uh, American Dad, I have become more fond of than Family Guy, but the Family Guy references just take it over the top for me. American Dad is. For me, I think is a better show than Family Guy. 
I think the songs are better. Yeah. I think the characters are a little more fun. I think the fucking alien that uh, the alien Roger, who's just like a pansexual extraterrestrial being that just has no straight character is fucking awesome. I, I like, will I will tell you I have to thank Seth MacFarlane yeah for real, for dude. educating an entire generation about pop culture references from the eighties and nineties like like whenever I am like well you don't know the song you're like yeah I know the song I'm like I, how do you know the song you know, I, fucking Family Guy I make references all the time where I'm like oh that reminds me of an episode of Family Guy and he's like how could that remind you of an episode of Family Guy and I'll say the scene and you go well that's pretty relevant and I'm yeah. like yeah all of it makes sense like eighties and nineties references crushing it yeah yeah well done. Um, um, but yeah, I mean, I, for me, I would say like better show one that I would watch more over and over is especially the new seasons, American dad, the new seasons of family guy just got too emotional and too weird. Dude. Family guy is like I, the jokes that he gets away with. It's so funny. Here's what's crazy. So yeah. real action, like live people can't aren't it. allowed to say these jokes, but, but somehow you put them in the mouth of a, a cartoon character. talking dog. Yeah. They can say whatever the fuck they or want. Or a British baby. Yeah. So you can say whatever the fuck you want. Yeah. Now I know we got to wrap up out of here. It's pretty amazing. So let's, um, let's break down what's, what we got going on. Um, we're in Charlotte this weekend, but when this drops, uh, we will most likely be in Raleigh, North Carolina is our next weekend. The Cinco de Drinco weekend. Those tickets are going to sell out. Uh, that so Thursday, Drinko, oh, yeah. Friday, Saturday. I think it's fourth, fifth, and sixth. Is it crazy that we're in North Carolina for four twenty and for Cinco de Drinco? That's pretty great. It's pretty awesome. Um, North so Carolina, you guys better come out. Raleigh, fourth, fifth, and sixth. That following weekend, guys, is when we start our mini theater tour. I'm pretty excited about Which is it, man. Kansas, right? Kansas. No, we go Tulsa. Oh, it's Oklahoma. We go Fort Smith, Arkansas, uh-huh. and then we go Wichita, Kansas. Okay. And then the week after that, got people in Michigan. You've been. You've been on me about when am I coming back? That's when I'm coming back. The Royal, week after that, Royal Oak, Michigan, I believe, is where and we will be. one theater show in Grand Rapids. We're there Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Oh, jeez, okay, right, okay. So I'm flying out Wednesday morning. All right, good we, to know. We, oh yeah, I'll be in Vegas. Yeah. Fucking same flight. That's um, right. God damn. But so, and listen, guys, um, listen, we really appreciate you, uh, listening to the podcast again. If you are listening, uh, if you could go to iTunes, and I do check, by the way, and leave uh, a review, it helps us tremendously. Um, you know, we are trying to build this organically, mm-hmm. um, not by, um, you know, having to go on other people's podcasts all the time. Or having people on the podcast. We're trying to just build it through word of mouth. And yeah. so... That it, it's your mouth. You know what I'm saying? That sounds dirty, but it is. Yeah. But so uh, if you could leave a review um, and subscribe and tell a friend, we would really appreciate it. Uh, and the new studio, although, listen, I think we're going to do this every weekend. Oh, I think we should 100%. We're going to rent. So, so quick. Rent so a studio every weekend. Yeah. Uh, ComedianJoshWolf.com for tour dates. Yep. Uh, Josh Wolf Comedy on all platforms. Uh, Jake underscore Wolf on Instagram. It's Jake Wolf on TikTok. Um, again, thank you guys so much for all the support and the love. Um, again, if you, people always ask, how can we help? What can we do? Like my dad said, please go on iTunes or wherever you get your podcast, uh, rate, um, leave us a comment and it'll shoot us hopefully to the top of the charts and hopefully we'll see you in your city soon. I love you. You got your bird brain hoodie on. Yeah. Shout out bird brain apparel, baby. They make some fucking great stuff. Legit, by the way, anybody listening. Who I think I was wearing this T-shirt last time we podcasted. That's funny because we referenced Cheap Trick. Oh yeah, we did. Um, I think I was probably wearing this T-shirt. Yeah. and this hat. Yeah. Well, you haven't worn a different hat in four years. No, so. you. But no, that's not true. But you know how I do it. Like I find a new black hat yep. with a white patch and black lettering. Yep. And I wear it into the ground. But shout listen, out, shout out Terry Black. Oh my too. god, the dude. best play to meet you'll ever have, other than my apartment. That sounds dirty, that but that was it the point. Oh, oh. <laughs> and on that note, well, this, okay, what were you saying about bird brain? Uh, Look, let me just it, say this, guys. Let me just say this. If you have somebody around Jacob's age in your life, um, and by, and I, I wear the bird brain stuff too, mm-hmm. but like th- Jacob's age and younger, especially, they're gonna fuck. And we're not sponsored by these dudes. No, we just, and, we just, we love their stuff. We love them as a as a company there. They, Super, uh, they're all family oriented. They started this shit at 14 at a mall kiosk. 
Um, and it's just for me now when we go and see them in Ohio, it's uh, it's the perfect, you know, if you want it, go fucking get it. Oh, dude, I I'm... went from a kiosk in a mall to a full f full storefront um, outside the mall that they used to work in. And, and so, dude, they're having places from other states asking them to open stores. Yeah. They're young dudes. They're younger than me, who, 21, 22. It's super inspirational. Yeah. One of the reasons I love going in there, I love their energy. But when what but they know what they wanted. Yeah, they're young. They have this crazy uh, work hustle. Yeah. Um, but when you go in there, they really treat you like it's a family thing. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like I love it. you walk in and if you don't know them, they're going to treat you like family. And when they were at that kiosk, they had their mom with them. And so, you know, it's definitely check out there. Yeah. Shit. Sh shout out Bird Brain. And thank you guys always for the love and the support. Um, and also, you know, if you is there a good example, if you have a dream, go fucking chase it. That's it. That's what they did. Can you know I tell you saying? something? And one last thing before we go, mm -hmm. especially at your age. I'm glad you're leaving Los Angeles. Me too. Look, at your age, and I would say this, take risks. Mm -hmm. make, take chances. Try shit. Lose money. Win money. Because be, by the time you turn 30, you're going to look back and think of... But this is the time to do it, everybody. Yeah. It's never... It's not, you'd be like, well, I can't start when I'm 30. You absolutely can start whatever the fuck you want when you're 30. Except maybe being a doctor, that probably might be a problem. But it just, well, you'd start so late. But then you have to do 12 years of school. It doesn't matter. But do, do get, 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 listen. Get out there. Take risks, man. This is the fucking time mm -hmm. for you to do this. And there are... As long as you're not hurting other people, look, there's no wrong choices. If you're like, dude, I want to, I want to herd sheep for a year. I want to know what that's like. Go herd some fucking sheep. Go to France. Go to wherever. Be poor in another country. Yeah. But go live life. There's a lot of shit to do out there. I wish I had done a little more. I did a lot, but I wish I had done a little more. Yeah. I'm happy you're going. I'm happy you're pushing all your chips in somewhere else. Los Angeles will always be there. I hope if you guys get bored in Las Vegas that you end up moving somewhere that's not Los Angeles. Yeah, I don't know if that'll happen. I hope you do, man. It's important to, even if you don't like winter, it's important to do one. Says you. Says me. Says All you. All right, dude. Thank I love. You. By the way, now look at the way that arm looks right now. Oh, dude. Which arm? My really, no, really, like how much of a reach I have on you? Look like that one? at that. Stop all right, it. we already did all the plugs. I'm not gonna do it again. Yeah, Thank but you guys let me so just much. stay in Don't on that. Don't let anybody it. tell you you can't do. Something. Oh, dude, you switched away. No, from that's right. No, no, no. Yeah. No. <laughs> Don't let anybody tell you. Don't let any tell anybody tell you you can't. All right. Yeah, go do your shit. Go, tell, go tell somebody you love them. Thank you guys so much. We love you. Listen, Thank dude. you again. I love Charlotte. We'll see you tonight. I love you. Love you too. I'm so happy that I get to do this with you. I feel super blessed and grateful for you to be out on the road. I, I feel, guys, if you haven't watched the videos I've been putting out with his sister, Caitlin, about me putting makeup on her. Yep. Super fucking funny. Um, we're putting out a video with me, you, and your older brother, Trevor, on stage mm -hmm. soon. This is really the best time and I've ever had yep. doing what I'm doing. Yeah, and come see us in a city near you. I have some material that I'm opening with. So if you want to come see something for the first time that probably won't be posted for a cool minute, we'll see you in a city near you. Love you guys. Love, Love you, guys. you Thank you. Love Later. you too. Later.